My name's David Christie, live just out of Rochester, Northern Victoria, on a fourth generation family farm, my wife Katrina farm. I came on the farm 26 years ago, Dad was milking 220 cows. We bought this farm 20 years ago and yeah, increased cow numbers and worked out pretty quick with the price of water and the climate changes and all that, we had to feed the cows a bit different. So we put in an earthen feed pad where we're standing. That worked well. Ended up concreting that in about 2010, thinking that'd solve all our issues. It didn't in a wet, well, when it rained, the concrete caught more water than let it go, and we still had nowhere to house the cows. Got a flood in 2011, had nowhere to put the cows for a little while, so we decided we'll retrofit this feed pad, and we made it a bit wide, a bit longer, put a roof over it, so the cows had somewhere to loaf and had some, some shade. Built this shed, we were milking 400 cows at the time. Worked very well, and as you do, you milk more and more. Got up to nearly 800 and realised that the shed couldn't handle that number. We we're still grazing pasture at the time, and realised with the drought and water prices, we had to change that way too. So we converted to double cropping, grown sorghum in the summer, forage sorghum, rye grass in the, in the winter, and still grazing. Same thing, get wet winters wasn't the answer, so decided to build another shed in 2020 to make a day and a night shed. This shed's 160 metres long, 37 metres wide. It's got 15 metres of concrete in the centre where feed alleys and cows can eat. Two loafing areas, 10 and a half metres wide by 160 for the cows to loaf on, so it works very good. Faces east-west for no other reason that it fitted in with the existing farm, but it's also 100% shade shed doesn't get the sun in the summer so it works well it's just a bit harder to maintain in the winter keep the bedding dry this has only got a 12 degree 12 or 13 degree pitch roof for the height that we're trying to keep it sort of minimal intrusive to the neighbors cows coming this shed during the day and then i could put a couple of mixes out in the new feed pad area and that's their night pad so don't graze anything in anymore double crop what we can the rest is loosen designing what we're going to do we looked at buying more land to milk more cows and that wasn't going to solve the, the problem of uh, lame cows in the winter. We're just going to make them walk further and same with heat stress. We're fairly landlocked and we would have to had to walk the cows a long way to gain anything. So we opted to do the shed and the shade shed and bring the fodder to the cows and make it more efficient that way. We looked at the free stalls and I wanted something as close to the paddock as you can get so we went to a deep litter loafing shed. Body me sums on a two litres of cow heat stress loss over 120 days and that was enough to go to the bank and get some money to get things rolling and just the, the savings of well, when we're grazing, you're not wrecking pastures in the winter, they're there for the spring good to go by housing the cows here, that was probably more of a cost benefit than the heat stress and just cow health, fertility, unbelievable. If you get to 32, 35 degrees, open the gates to try and get them out and it's very hard to get them out of a night, so they're comfortable. When we did decide to build the second shed in 2020, we'd already spent the money on the concrete infrastructure of the feed pad, so we didn't really want to rip that up and start again. In our designs, we had the two sheds in line with each other, which meant covering the existing feed pad. But after learning, you've got so much concrete in here, which you need, but it's a waste for loafing area. So we opted to build the new shed. We went to the 18 degree pitch. I think it's 18 metres from the existing concrete feed pad and we put all the water troughs in between the feed and the shed so they've got to walk out to access that. So you've got five and a half thousand square metres of loafing area. A lot easier to plough, nothing to hit and cows got plenty of room. We want to keep it as basic as we could. We opted not to go fans would be great, then you've got to get power here and all the rest of it. We, we opted not to do that and at times we wish we did. We can convert this into a beef feed lot tomorrow without ripping any infrastructure out. It, um, you just one herd out and one herd in. So. The same as the other shed, it could, it could turn into a machinery shed, a shed, a beef feed lot tomorrow without any infrastructure getting changed at all. But I, I did it for simplicity. I can be finished feeding by 7.30 in the morning and you've got the day to farm, whereas before we're, we're rolling out hay and silage all day and yeah, you run it down a paddock and you watch 200 cows run along the line you've just put out of hay. Pretty depressing. So Yeah, we went away from permanent pasture because of the price of the water and Really, we're growing rubbish in the summer when it's too hot, past Bellum, and, and the cows are all bunch up in one corner and it'll die anyway, where they're bogging up. So traditionally, we went to a annual rye grass in the autumn, and we were getting a couple of grazes out of that and then locking up the silage. Now we, we don't, we zero graze. 
Put most of it more into loosen now. We can cut our 25 dry ton to the hectare off that by cut and carry the loosen. We try and get seven cuts and it's a very good product, high protein product and cows love it. We scrape this centre out once a week and you wouldn't get a wheelbarrow of waste out of it. And we're putting 10 or 12 tonne a day in here and 20 tonne out there. We shovel that out as need be. That's the only downfall of having troughs outside. When it rains, whatever fodder isn't eaten is shoveled out. So there's a fairly high labour component in that, whereas this year run along with the JCB and scrape it out. Not flood wash, just dry scraped. Dry scrape with, well, we've got a scraper and just a bucket in the summer, and we've got a slurry tank and converter with a, a suction with a scraper underneath in the winter. When it's slurry, you can't pick it up. So we suck that out, take it out of the compost area and blow it out there and wait for the summer and then we turn it into compost and back in the shed, usually the next winter, or fertiliser. We pushed the shed a bit over, look, we got up to just under 800 cows and the bedding was too hard to dry, very hard to keep it dry. So we've gone back to 14.7 square metres per cow with the two sheds, day and night, and that seems to work fine. We till both sheds every day and we don't go deep the compost ones, they sort of going down 500 mil. We probably only gave five or six inches just to scratch the top up. And that's enough to dry the top and get rid of all the flies. You see how flies take off and you disturb their larvae. That works fine most of the year. In the winter when it starts getting a bit dry, I've got a flurry spreader that we take the back door out and we, we get hardwood chips out of Melbourne and uh, recycled timber. And we just do one pass each side, probably two or three times a week. And that just puts the skimmer dry stuff on top. We stop ploughing it when we're doing that and the cows just incorporate that themselves. I am passionate about compost. Everything on the farm gets composted. It's, whether it's effluent or spoiled silage or damaged hay, anything, tree, tree clippings that get mulched. We compost everything on the farm. We've halved our water use. We, we, we water the loose from once a month now instead of twice. Uh, we, we cut 10 rolls a hectare religiously every cut, eight to 10 rolls, just by using compost. Don't use any synthetic fertilizers anymore. So there's a there's a hell of a cost saving in that and I think I think the dirt's better. Put a bit of lime and gypo out and all that, but don't use any urea. It's turned a waste into an asset, really. It's a fair bit of work in maintaining it and getting it right. We we row it up in a pretty crude row, let it dewater, and we, we start turning that probably three weeks after the row's made, and then we try and turn it once a week for six weeks. You've got to get it to 65 degrees for they say three days, but you can get it there for two, three weeks in the right conditions. You might have to add a bit of water, but if you can get it, get it to 65 degrees for that long, it's stable. And supposedly it kills all the weed seeds and pathogens and all that. When we used to spread raw manure out, especially on the loosen, we, we did more damage to the loosen by growing weeds and stinging nettles. So if you can get the compost cooked, you don't grow the weeds that you used to. It's pretty clean. If I'm relying on one shed, you've got to have someone here every single time you pull the cows out to plow the shed. Whereas this way, we, we play the sheds as soon as we can get the cows out, but that could be three or four hours. You don't have to be here the minute they come out. Whereas if you're running the cows back to the same shed, just seem to be running the fine line all the time. And with labour, if you've got guys milking, they know to get them out of one shed at night and they go into this one in the morning, or vice versa. But they know the system, whereas if you're grazing, you've got to explain paddocks and all that. We've got tree plantations every couple of bays, so if, if you have a tree go down at night and you've got no fences working, whereas this is no electric fence holding them in, we're always one feet ahead of what's going on. So if something you have a breakdown or something something's gets called away, you've got a feed ahead of you. So the, the two mixes that went out for tonight, I did them early this morning. So it frees up your day for, for whatever else. If we can make it simple, we do. My advice, if anyone's thinking about going down this track, is make the call and find out regulations for a start, if you can build it and where you can build it, and check with your neighbours and all the rest of it, and jump the car and just have a look at as many sheds as you can. 